Good day, and thank you for your interest in Stratford and in this State of the Town Address. This address is coming to you via video in consideration of the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic that continues to grip our community, our state, our nation, and the globe. During this past year, our community has been tested in ways we couldn't have imagined a mere 13 months ago. But as with other major crises throughout our history, Stratford has been an example of resilience and strength. I credit the unique makeup of this great town, its residents, employees, businesses, community service organizations, and volunteers who have fought and continue to fight in the front lines as we find ourselves on the verge of emerging from this pandemic. Virtually all Stratford departments have been engaged in some meaningful way in combating the spread of COVID-19, and that is where I'd like to begin this report. Since March of 2020, when the first confirmed case of COVID-19 was announced here in Stratford, our Department of Public Health, led by Director Andrew Bosevin, and our public safety departments, led by Larry Ciccarelli, have been at the center of our community response, facilitating numerous community testing opportunities, responding to those in need, and taking a proactive role in limiting the spread of the virus through the community outreach and awareness. As school closed on the onset of COVID-19, Superintendent Janet Robinson ensured through a partnership with Sodexo, Stratford Public Schools and our own community services that meals would remain available for children who were suddenly no longer attending schools in person. That program has grown and through association with our various community pantries, such as Sterling House, Stratford YMCA and the South End Community Center, we continue to work to ensure that those in need during these crises receive meals. As approved, vaccines from Moderna and Pfizer and now Johnson & Johnson became available and our health department became a part of a larger network of mobilized state resources setting up vaccine clinics. These vaccine clinics here have been run smoothly and residents have been very complimentary on their capable operation. My thanks goes out to Andrea, Greta Broniel, Bernie Bova and the health department, also Kim Velasquez, public school nursing supervisor, for their hard work in making these clinics operate as smoothly as possible in these challenging times. I would also like to commend our emergency medical services personnel under the leadership of Michael Louise as they partner with the health department in administering vaccines. We launched a groundbreaking program called Operation Homeward Bound, a partnership between the Stratford Health Department and emergency medical services that ensures seniors and those in need who are homebound, they are still able to get and receive the COVID-19 vaccination at their home. Our town continues to be in the red zone classification of more than 15 plus cases per 100,000, but there has been an encouraging decrease in case rates in recent weeks as we head toward warmer weather. Our focus continues to be centered on facilitating the vaccination of all eligible Stratford residents. To date, we have vaccinated more than 5,700 individuals in Stratford clinics, while nearly 11,000 Stratford residents, or 20.2%, have currently been vaccinated. While individuals in our town have been impacted by COVID-19, so have our area's businesses. That is why our Economic and Community Development Department, under the leadership of Mary Dean, engaged in a number of outreach programs to promote our great local restaurants for takeout during the early closures. They have helped facilitate local and state grants and relief opportunities for our qualifying local businesses, began a job bank that connects Stratford residents with job openings and Stratford businesses, and are serving as a clearinghouse of information and resources that are available to help all Stratford businesses who need it. We have also created Stratford Strong, a long-term recovery task force through our economic development and community and senior services departments with a focus on identifying community needs and leveraging financial and volunteer resources to address those needs. The task force has two groups, basic needs with members including Sterling House, the South End Community Center, the Stratford YMCA, Stratford Hispanic Heritage, Police Activities League, the Stratford Interfaith Clergy Association, and other organizations. The Small Business Resource Group includes partners from the Stratford Chamber of Commerce, United Illuminating, Stratford Businesses, and the Metropolitan Councils of Government. We mourn all whom we have lost to this virus, and we look forward to the day we can appropriately honor those in our community. As we continue to deal with the challenges of the pandemic, the regular operation of the town has needed to continue. I am proud of the directors, chiefs, supervisors, and employees who have kept the business of our town running as smoothly as possible under these extraordinary circumstances. I would like to thank the members of the Town Council who have supported our budgets and policies and who have been critical partners in approving three successive town budgets that have provided a reduction in the mill rate, ending the cycle of tax increases that gripped Stratford in previous years. I have done that again in the proposed budget which was released to the Council on March 12th. 
In contrast to the preceding Council of 2015-17, this Council has achieved their fiduciary responsibility in a timely manner by approving budgets and setting corresponding mill rates that have lowered taxes. I look forward to working collaboratively with all members of the Council this year to improve on the work we have done, which includes improving town policies that promote environmental sustainability and reducing littering, taking advantage of low interest borrowing to improve infrastructure and embracing economic development opportunities. In addition to an effective, relevant Council, I am blessed to work with professional, experienced, and proactive staff whose expertise is greatly valued by me and is critical to the functionality of town operations. My Chief Administrative Officer, Chris Timniak, Chief of Staff, Michael Downs, Economic and Community Development Director, Mary Dean, and Public Safety Director, Larry Ciccarelli, are key to how we function and how we represent ourselves to the taxpayers and to our neighbors. Let me start with some of the highlights in the areas of economic and community development. In response to the coronavirus pandemic, the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, also known as HUD, notified the town that Stratford would receive an additional $308,500 in CDBG-CV funding, which is to be used to prevent, prepare for, and respond to the coronavirus pandemic. This is the third and final allocation authorized by the Coronavirus Aid Relief and Economic Securities Act, also known as CARES, which was signed on March 27, 2020, to respond to the growing effects of this history of public health crisis. In an effort to assist many struggling small businesses within our community, the town has established the Micro Enterprise Assistant Program, which will provide much needed support to help our business community prevent, prepare for, and respond to the coronavirus. 40 small businesses have applied so far, and 24 have been accepted by the Economic Development Office. For the Exit 33 interchange on Interstate 95, the construction of this full interchange is expected to be complete about six to seven months ahead of schedule. The northbound entrance is expected to open this June, and the southbound exit will open at the close of 2021. This interchange will be a significant benefit to the town by creating an improved traffic pattern on Route 1, aiding in the commercial redevelopment around Stratford's transit-oriented district and the Route 1 corridor. Two newly completed projects in that area include 608 Ferry Boulevard, a building that was vacant for several years and is now a mixed-use retail on the first level and residential on the second, and Knott's Landing, Sydney Street, where Erdstadt Biddle transformed several vacant homes into a tax revenue-producing commercial property with a Chipotle restaurant, a self-storage facility, and soon-to-be Starbucks. At exit 32, the intersection and surrounding area have been redesigned, improving the off-ramp from I-95 South and the means of access and traffic from West Broad and Linden Street, along with safer pedestrian travel. Completion of this project is expected in early summer. The Scudder School property has received two informal proposals that have presented for our housing developments in the transit-oriented district. There is renewed interest in this location due the, to the proximity of the train station and Stratford Center. After a great deal of time, effort, and money being expended to redevelop the Stratford Army engine plant, the Army provided the final decision document in February to Connecticut Deep, which has been signed by Commissioner Dykes. The record of decision will enable the Army Corps of Engineers to begin remediating the mudflats along the property and cleanup and development of the upland 77 plus acres. This is the first critical step in the meaningful progress of the redevelopment of this site. Work is expected to commence this fall and we are very, very excited for this day. In 2020, I put together a subcommittee that looked at the possible redevelopment options for Shakespeare property based on the community's feedback following the fire. The subcommittee did a wonderful job of presenting different size and types venues along with the multiple business plans. Any development on this site will require some capital investment as part of the town. Looking forward, the council is interested in proposals for the property. However, they are very conscious not to overextend the town at this point. In the meantime, we are grateful that the property is being enjoyed by literally thousands of residents and neighboring towns with the Shakespeare Winter Market. Kudos to Tom Dillon, who along with himself has volunteered his family's time to organize and run the market. Significant funding has been awarded to the Complete Streets Project, which encompasses a portion of Main Street from Barnum Avenue through the center of town and south to Harvey Place. The town has submitted a 60% design to DOT, who have already committed to funding over $2 million for the implementation. Demolition and remediation at 495 Lordship Boulevard are complete. The GFI, who is the owner, will be submitting building permits and plans to deep before the end of the year. The 360,000 square foot building is currently being marketed and may likely be a warehouse or distribution center. Riders Landing, also known as Parkway Plaza Highlights, have submitted for development 
signature waterfront gateway development, upscale restaurant retail hospitality destination, design that promotes tourism, education, and community, and encourages pedestrian and recreational use, connecting to the Sikorsky Bridge bikeway and walkway, it incorporates Merritt Parkway architectural designs, and integrates with the adjacent Merritt Parkway Museum. Stratford Avenue Rotary design has been sent to DOT and in the next few months with the project expected to be completed sometime in the fall. The town's new online permitting through Viewpoint was in place prior to 2020, which enabled permitting to move seamlessly at the start of the pandemic. The town was able to continuously enhance the process so that the business could benefit by increasing their footprints over the past year to address COVID restrictions. Despite the economic challenges of COVID-19 and the general condition of the overall state economy, we are pleased to have welcomed over 145 new businesses to Stratford over the past year, including Amazon Services, Fairfield County Healthcare Associates, and Nutmeg State Financial Credit Union. Stratford managed significant business and personal property growth, which are credit to our community, our welcoming and supportive business climate, and the increased desirability of living here in Stratford. The town clerk's office, under the direction of Susan Pollock, faced many challenges during the 2020 pandemic year. More importantly, they have learned lessons on how to work smarter and become more efficient along the way. They continue to secure grant funding to have older land records re-indexed, scanned, and merged into our online database. Title searchers and the public can find these land recordings online going back to 1980. This has been extremely helpful during the pandemic where land records and maps can be easily accessed online and printed. This has greatly reduced the in-person traffic within the office. With lower interest rates, there's been an uptick in real estate sales. The town clerk's office recorded 9,400 land record documents in 2020, which was an increase of 649 from 2019. The town's real estate conveyance tax collected in 2020 was a little less than 900,000, and it, overall it increased by 125,000 over 2019. The most daunting challenge in 2020 was the issuing of absentee ballots for the presidential primaries and the November election. Voters were able to use COVID-19 as a reason to vote by absentee ballot. The most absentee ballots ever issued in a presidential election were 2014. But in 2020, in the presidential election, the town clerk's office issued over 10,000 absentee ballots. In the planning and zoning office, Jay Habansky, zoning administrator, has worked diligently to achieve Stratford's acceptance into FEMA's National Flood Insurance Program community rating system, and that's based on its efforts in protecting the town's residents from storm flood-related events. Coastal and riverine flooding causes hundreds of millions of dollars worth of damage to homes and businesses around the country on an annual basis. Typical homeowners and commercial property insurance policies do not cover these flood losses. After a lengthy two-year application process led by the Office of Planning and Zoning, Stratford has secured a Class 8 rating, making Stratford one of the highest scoring municipalities in the state. By securing a Class 8, Stratford residents should expect to receive an annual savings of $140 per policy, which totals over $200,000 in community-wide savings. Stratford is one of nine municipalities in the state to be granted acceptance into the CRS, and it has been recognized as a leader in resilience efforts. Susmitha so Atata, our town planner, has worked alongside Jay and alongside the new Architectural Review Board. Currently, Susmitha is working with the Stratford Housing Partnership to draft and present Stratford's first housing plan. Much planning is underway to make the town more resilient to coastal impacts. Building on the Coastal Resiliency Plan of 2016, the town has applied for multiple grants to further its mitigation efforts. One such grant that was recently awarded will provide partial funding for a flood wall to provide perimeter protection to the water pollution control facility. This project will be designed to a level in excess of the currently predicted 500-year storm, allowing the plant to continue to operate during and immediately after coastal events. The town is in the middle of a project to renovate five of its sanitary sewer pump stations that are at the end of their design life. These improvements will renovate the buildings at Oak Bluff, Short Beach, Benton Street, Pex Mill Pond and Riders Lane. The work will include coastal resiliency upgrades to improve the structure and equipment from the storm in excess of the 500 year predicted storm. State of the art pumps, controls and communication will provide an efficient pumping facility at each location. This project is scheduled for completion in the spring of 2022. The permitting effort for the replacement of the Surf Avenue culvert and the flood wall continues, working with Connecticut DOP and Connecticut DEEP to secure approvals for this project. 
Under the direction of Andrea Bosevay in the Stratford Health Department, one of three accredited health departments in the state of Connecticut continues to apply high standards of performance for the benefit of Stratford residents and businesses. Apart from the aforementioned central role they play in responses to the global pandemic, they are working with regional and state partners in implementing the newly adopted federal FDA food code. The health department has assisted in the launch of Viewpoint and is partnering with local health departments to design and share the cost of food inspection software. The town council has reviewed and approved updating ordinance for barbershops, hairdressing, and cosmetology. Community health is a priority for us, as well as the six collaborating area health departments, two acute care hospitals, three community health centers, and other organizations who are addressing chronic diseases such as obesity, diabetes, heart disease, mental health, and substance abuse in our communities. Earlier this year, Tammy Trojanowski took over a new department that consolidated both community services and senior services. Senior and community services emerged to strengthen our capacity to support Stratford residents across the lifespan. Specifically, this realignment makes our services more accessible and easier to navigate for residents so that there is no wrong door. This also improves collaboration amongst the town's human services professionals that will benefit residents. Community services transitioned individual youth counseling, family therapy, and court diversion through the Juvenile Review Board from in-person to telehealth for continuous uninterrupted services during the pandemic. They have started accepting insurance for counseling services. Child Health Development Institute of Connecticut, CHDI, also credentialed community services as a trauma-focused cognitive behavioral therapy certified treatment site. Counselors complete in-depth training in trauma utilizing the evidence-based treatment model. This allows us to handle trauma cases without needing to refer out to other providers due to lack of trauma experience. We are better equipped to help Stratford residents during intense times of need. Community Services is a key partner with economic development, spearheading Stratford Strong, our long-term recovery task force. Through this collaboration, we have leveraged CDBG funds to meet unmet needs of residents and small businesses. Social services provided by Community Services, senior services in the South End Community Center, including accepting CT energy assistance programs and applications, renter's rebate applications, and IRS VITA tax prep assistance were completed over the telephone to provide safe, contactless service for residents. The South End Community Center Food Pantry, operating in cooperation with the South End Community Center Council, scaled up to meet increased demand. They also expanded services to include delivery to older patrons. Prior to the start of COVID-19 pandemic, three to 400 seniors visited the Baldwin Center daily. They participate in any number of activities, recreational, exercise, painting, lectures. They socialized over coffee. They played card games and pool. Transportation services provided curb-to-curb -curb service from home to medical appointments, grocery stores, and to the Baldwin Center. During the pandemic, we provided vital transportation, food delivery, well check calls, and assistance in making COVID-19 vaccinations appointments and made countless referrals to a variety of local, regional, and state organizations. The Baldwin Center also served as a COVID-19 test site for Yale New Haven Health. The much-anticipated makeover of the Baldwin Center is officially now underway. From top to bottom, the floors will be replaced, new light fixtures installed, and it will receive a fresh coat of paint. The center has also been outfitted with new furniture so that when seniors return, they have a great new renovated facility to enjoy. This year, we also completed the improvements and realignment of Route 110 and relocation of the entrance at Sikorsky, which includes pedestrian improvements and a new bus shelter, dedicated turn lane to Oranoke Lane, and video controlled lights at the Route 15 off-ramp. This improvement has been a tremendous benefit to improving traffic flow in the area, particularly during rush hour. We have come a long way since the spring of 2018 when we hosted EPA Assistant Administrator Alexandra Dunn on a visit to the Rubestus Ball Field site and announced the plan to successfully remediate the contamination there. The cleanup of the federal Raymark Superfund site and the adjacent contract plating site has progressed on target during 2020. Barrier walls are in place along the tree plantings to buffer residential properties on Cottage Place, Clinton Avenue, Patterson Avenue, and from future construction will continue through the remediation activities. The Hall Road through the former contract plating site at 540 Longbrook Avenue is in use hauling Raymark material to the ball field. The contract plating site partnering with the ball field will soon be marketed for light industrial use, putting over 17 acres in the TOD on the tax rolls. 
We have made other significant strides in conservation environmental fronts, and the town was recently recognized with a silver certification by Sustainable City. Stratford is one of the very few communities that reached the silver certification, currently the highest level, without a prior bronze certification. The town continues to seek parcels to acquire and protect in accordance with the Plan of Conservation Development, Coastal Resiliency Plan, Open Space Plan, and others. The town was awarded two grants of service from Connecticut Brownfields Initiative. The first in the winter spring of 2020 was for the completion of the updated town-wide Brownfields Inventory. This allows the town to understand priority properties that may be stagnant in their redevelopment due to a known or perceived environmental contamination. The second in late summer fall of 2020 was for the assistance in the preparation of two federal EPA brownfield grants, one for community-wide assessment and one for site-specific cleanup. The results of the grant applications will be announced in the spring of 2021. Two interpretive signs were installed as a result of funds awarded through the Connecticut Sea Grant. One sign at Long Beach and the other at Short Beach provide educational information on Long Beach and the Great Meadows Salt Marsh and the Housatonic River Estuary. This is a project we hope to expand to aid in providing env environmental education throughout our town. The town participated in our fourth year of collecting data for Save the Sound's Unified Water Study. The year 2020 marked the first year this critical data had been fully incorporated into the annual Long Island Sound Report Card. The town continued management of the $2.8 million grant from DECD for the assessment and cleanup of the former contract plating at 540 Logbrook Avenue, and also continued managing of the $1.2 million DECD grant for the cleanup of the former center school property located on 1000 East Broadway. Our community outreach programs through our Police Activities League, PAL, and other avenues continue to grow. The primary mission is to expand programs and to connect with at-risk youth. The PAL design will be to maintain contact through all levels of school. We continue to work with the Board of Education to tailor PAL programs to students who will benefit the most from the mentoring. PAL has impacted in excess of 1,000 students in the previous year and is still growing. The Stratford Police Department has developed a police engagement program to educate citizens on how to react to police contact. This program began in 2016 under the direction of Curtis Eller, James Lofton, and Aaron McLaughlin. It is our belief that this information shows a perspective from citizen to officer. The program places residents in a position of an officer and runs the scenarios in which they must choose a course of action. Real world incidents are then reviewed and then discussed. This allows unfiltered dialogue and openness. And we have run this program in both high schools and several area churches and four community groups. Technology has become an important crime-fighting tool. Our computer forensics division has become a recognized leader in this area. We will continue to invest in upgrading computers and video surveillance. We will coordinate with other local businesses for access to camera surveillance and to assist in investigations. Dispatch, under the direction of J.P. Straczynski, has successfully deployed new technologies such as Text to 911, AEAD Link, and the new recording device Varen. Increased training opportunity for staff include ride-alongs, customer service training, active shooter events, web EOC, and created new revenue opportunities for training and testing other departments' dispatchers. Our emergency medical service, reporting to Mike Louise, the executive director, is an accredited National Association of EMTs training center, an approved American Heart Associated training center, and an approved safe sitter training site. Stratford EMS is a heart safe workplace and has maintained enhanced heart safe community EMS Association Lighthouse Awards. EMS was able to achieve Mission Lifeline Gold Plus recognition status through the American Heart Association for their response times and work with heart attacks. EMS is also working very closely with the health department to deliver the COVID-19 vaccine to as many residents as possible. Early last year, I was pleased to appoint Brian Lampart as the chief of the Stratford Fire Department. Under his capable leadership, the fire department faced numerous challenges under COVID-19. They were successful with formulating directives for protecting our own, as well as citizens that we serve to limit the spread of the virus. The fire department is pursuing grant monies to help improve our fire ground communication, specialty rescue training, and smoke alarms to be installed at residential locations that are deficient of fire protection. In May of 2020, the town was awarded an ISO classification two that ultimately can save the taxpayers a significant amount of money through property insurance. Renovations have been made to both the Huntington Road Station two and Lordship Firehouse Station three, that including many overdue upgrades, flooring, kitchen upgrades, bathroom facility upgrades, heating and air conditioning, painting and lighting. 
The fire department continues to provide professional service 24 hours a day, seven days a week to anyone who needs help. I was happy to promote Robert Daniel to assistant fire chief and fire marshal. The office under his leadership has issued an increased number of building permits with several large scale projects completed. The Stratford High School project, three self-storage facilities, de the demolition of the mobile chemical plant, which will be replaced by a new 360,000 square foot building, and the Parkway Plaza project and several Sikorsky projects. The fire marshal's office remains open 24 seven and will continue to work throughout the COVID pandemic, conducting fire code inspections and fire investigations with no shutdown. The office has been available to residents and businesses of Stratford during these trying times. Under the management of Chris Timniak, CAO, and Dawn Sabo, our new finance director, the finance department incorporated efficiencies that make Stratford run leaner than prior years. Through their efforts, we have consolidated efforts between the town and the Board of Education, which affords us increased buying power and lower costs. We have closed out old bonds, returning millions of dollars to the town, and we have started taking advantage of short-term debt options, lowering our long-term debt. During the past year, we have made critical long-term adjustments to funding our pension and bonded debt that have resulted in savings of $9.1 million over the bond terms. Refinancing has created a $3 million in budgetary relief in 2022 and $2.7 million in each 2023 and 2024, and 560000 in fiscal year 2025. We are realizing significant savings through expanding combined services with the Board of Education and we continue to make further strides utilizing technology aimed at a more efficient process with our recent MUNIS upgrade for all departments. Our Public Works Department is now under the capable direction of Renee Serra, the first woman to hold the position of Public Works Director, assisted by Tom Albert, who is the Interim Deputy Public Works Director. Together, they continue to manage and maintain more than 1.8 million square feet of building and 200 miles of roads and sidewalks. Public Works has maintained a second shift parks crew that has afforded the town additional field maintenance coverage while reducing costs, and added a second shift building crew to repair town and Board of Education buildings while they are unoccupied by students and staff. During the pandemic, we have been especially mindful of the upkeep and outdoor amenities we offer for residents to enjoy. Specifically, the completion of the new pavilion, sidewalks, and concrete pad at Juliet Low Park, a new irrigation system at Short Beach Golf Course and Short Beach Wall Fields, and the renovation of Stony Brook Baseball Field, the returfing of Bernal High School Football Field, the renovation of the school's running track and the hardball field, the completion of the South End Community Center Playscape with state funding, and a complete infield overhaul at DeLuca Field and the upcoming design and installation of four new post-tension tennis courts at Longmer Park are a few of the highlights. Public Works is also focused on improving the aesthetics of the town with the addition of the flowering pots on the lamppost at Main Street and the increased holiday lights and snowflakes on every lamppost on Main Street and Barnum Avenue. Public Works took advantage of the unobscured access to town and Board of Education facilities to complete efficiency upgrades and projects such as boiler replacements, oil and gas conversions, installation of LED lights, and initiating a major facelift and asbestos abatement at the Baldwin Center. Our recreation department successfully created a safe COVID compliant way to offer summer camps, athletic programs, virtual theater activities, and swim lessons for children and adults to enjoy during this challenging time. This spring, we can begin our bulk item collection, which was extended last year during COVID so that many residents could take advantage of their time at home to clean out large items. This spring, we are beginning our paving and sidewalk repair program throughout town. In the summer, we will embark on a replacement of three school roofs at Chapel, Second Hill Lane at Worcester, adding solar as well to Bunnell and Johnson House. The final phases of the new Stratford High School are near completion with full occupancy of the new gymnasium, auxiliary gym, auditorium lecture hall, music rooms, and the culinary classrooms. The final phase of this summer will be the installation of solar panels on the roof, which, which will reduce the cost of electricity empowering the building. Despite the unforeseen challenges associated with the pandemic, the project is being delivered under the approved budget. I'm honored and proud to represent Stratford as your mayor. Our community builds team, accentuates partnership, and achieves great results from those collaborations. When I think of Stratford, I think of unbelievable environmental assets in our river, our shore, and our forest. I see transportation infrastructure of adjacent highways, rail and air. I see nonprofit partners second to none in our library, YMCA, Sterling House, South End Community Center, Stratford Visiting Nurses, and the Stratford Chamber of Commerce. 
And most importantly, I see the resiliency of a community that knows itself, works together, and can achieve greatness, particularly in these trying times. I'm looking forward to what the future holds for our special community of Stratford. Thank you for taking the time to watch today.